You know, one thing I'll always say about the WWE back in the day, the WWF, is everybody had an opinion about it. Either people really liked it or they really didn't. It wasn't a whole lot of middle ground. But the one thing it did was it left an impression upon everyone. So back in the Hogan era, you had people that loved it, said this is great, this is awesome, Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, the Ultimate Warrior, the Macho Man, Jake the Snake, all these guys are cartoon characters, larger than life. This is some cool shit. The personification of the 80s in so many ways. But then you would have those adults maybe that sat there and said, that ain't wrestling, or this is stupid and hokey and corny and dumb and cartoonish kitty crap, and I don't want to watch it. And it's fake crap, and I don't want to watch it. But no matter what, Everybody had some type of opinion about it. It made some type of impression. Then you go to, let's say, the Attitude Era. You know, it was what it was. And for a lot of people, it was hip, edgy, you know, with the times crash television. With, again, larger-than-life characters, but characters that fit perfectly into the pop culture of the time that in some ways helped set the pop culture of the time. And then you also had those that said, no. This is horrible. This isn't wrestling the way I remember it. This isn't how it was meant to be. This isn't the Hogan era. This isn't Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes and the Full Hoofman. It's none of that. This is sexual, violent crap. And I don't want anything to do with it. It's not a good example for our kids. I don't want my kids watching it. Da, 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 da. But no matter what, good, bad, otherwise, it made some type of impression. Frankly, when I look at the WWE product today, I struggle to see how it could really make an impression upon anyone. If it does make an impression, it's probably a bad one, but not bad in the traditional sense. It's just kind of like a uh, type of impression. I mean, it, it's not something where everybody knows what the WWE is or what the WWE represents or what the product is all about. It's not like it's something that really steps out on a limb or takes chances or you know pushes the envelope. None of that stuff. You know, a lot of people that maybe like the WWE like it because of past reputation and, um, you know, history. Like me. Then you have those that don't like it because, again, of past reputation and history over the years. Being fake, being scripted, being violent, having sexual innuendos and language and all this other crap. The WWE product of today, I don't think, creates an impression of any kind. People have an impression about it in large part due to uh, past history, good or bad, which means the WWE really doesn't stand out above the crowd. And when you look at the company's ratings, especially on television on a week-in, week-out basis, you can see where this product that once did stand out in a lot of ways, head and shoulders above the crowd on cable television, now just kind of fits into the pack. And while they're still at the front of that pack in some ways, they're not leading the pack. They're just a part of that lead pack, if you will. And I think that ultimately is a reflection of the WWE's identity crisis and the fact that this company has no clue what they're doing in the sense of they don't know who they're targeting. They don't know which direction they want to go to. They don't know where the future lies. And I think it reflects in their product. I really, really do. And it reflects, it's reflected in the direction of their company from a creative standpoint and the fact that there's all types of mixed signals. There's all types of inconsistencies. It's really hard to figure out what the hell they're doing. I mean, let's look at it this way. This is a PG brand, a PG company. So this is a company that is supposed to be kid and family friendly. Yet all the while, you're selling that family safe or family friendly and also trying to sell violence. And whether or not there's blood and guts and everything else spilling out, you're still selling violence. You know, while cartoons will do that and that's all fine and good, at the end of the day, there's still a mixed signal there. You're selling it on the one hand as kid and family friendly, yet you're still ultimately marketing the violence. I'm going to get you, I'm going to beat your ass, I'm going to beat you up, I'm going to get you, da 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 da. It's supposed to be a kid, family friendly show, and that's who they target, yet at the same time, they're concerned about that 18 to 34 or 18 to 39 male demographic that the advertisers are concerned with. So you're trying to shoot for demographics directly that your advertisers care about indirectly. All the while, you're shooting for this kid and family-friendly audience, yet your audience is still 
male over the age of 18 dominant. So you're appealing to a small segment of your audience, like 20%, 21%. And while people will talk about, you know, that means women get involved when you talk about kids and families and husbands bring their kids or dads bring their kids, their wives, their girlfriends, their mistresses, what have you, their side pieces. And now some of that is true. But at the end of the day, the demographic that your advertisers care about the most and that the television networks pay attention to the most and the Nielsen ratings pay attention to the most is the audience that you try to appeal to the least, which is the male 18 to 34 or 18 to 39 demographic. And all the while, you still have an audience that is incredibly dominated by adult males under the age of 40. So you're appealing to one and not appealing to the other. Yet all the while, you really need that other one to help you in terms of success from an advertising standpoint, in terms of an overall audience and television rating standpoint. And you look at it again, this is a PG company with show names like Extreme Rules and Elimination Chamber and Hell in a Cell. So you're trying to be family friendly, but you've got steel cage matches and you know TLC matches and you know Texas death matches or Texas strap matches and all, all these other type of extreme simulation matches. Hell in a cell. You're supposed to be family friendly, but you have hell in a cell. The Elimination Chamber, that ghastly monstrosity. But yet you're trying to appeal to kids and families. It's like you can't have it all. If you're going to be one, then you got to be one. you got to go all the way with it. Like you did in the Hogan era. You went for families. You went for kids. You went down the cartoon road. But by God, you embraced it. You went with it. And as a result, more adults ended up hopping on board because of it. And then in the Attitude Era... You targeted that male 18 to 34, 18 to 39 demographic, and you went with it, and that's who you were going for. And wouldn't you know, as a result, you were really, in a way, targeting kids because kids want to be adults more than anything else. They most certainly don't want to be kids, so now they wanted to see this edgy, cool crap, and you brought more kids on board. Now you're sitting there playing to one side of the fence, which isn't appealing to the other side of the fence, because on the other hand, you're also trying to appeal to this side of the fence, which doesn't appeal to this side of the fence, and all types of shit. And then you've got your characters like John Cena and, and many others, too. He's not the only one. You've got these guys saying bitch and ass and I'm going to kill you and I'm going to murder you and go to hell and all this other crap. How is this kid or family friendly? You can't have your cake and eat it, too. For the WWE, when they've been at their most successful throughout history, they go after one group, they go after one demo, and they own it. And they make it happen. And what happens as a result is more audience comes from other demos because of the success of appealing to that one demo. It happened in the Hogan era, and it most certainly happened in the Attitude era as well. And then when you think of it outside of just the uh, identity problem that they have with the PG company, let's talk about it from a target audience standpoint. This is a company that doesn't like the Internet. Yet... They try to reinvent it all the time. See Tout. Remember WWEUniverse.com dumb shit? They, they don't get the internet. They, I, they get it more than they did, but Vince still doesn't like it. So as long as Vince doesn't like it and Vince doesn't get it, then the company still doesn't like it and the company still doesn't get it. Yet their very future is dependent on the internet, in particular with social media and in particular the WWE Network. I mean, the WWE Network is their present. It is most certainly their future as a company for so many of the different things that they do. For a company that for so long rebelled against the Internet, hated the Internet, and then when they finally jumped on board with the Internet, tried to do the Internet their way because they thought they knew better than anybody else, even though they were 15 years behind the times, now their very livelihood in many ways is dependent upon said Internet and the WWE Network. Knowing also that with that Internet, comes the smart fans, the smarts, whatever the hell you want to call us, hardcore fans, whatever. This is a company that has hated the smart fans and has always hated them and will continue to hate them. Yet, they will depend on them for the WWE Network. They want to appeal to mainstream people, yet they create a network that largely features um, programming that is going to appeal to the audience that the WWE doesn't like, that hardcore audience that they feel is going to be in the fold no matter what. Not only that, while they really hate the smart fans and hate the hardcore fans and don't really care about them in a way because they feel like they're always going to be there no matter what and they're going to be unhappy no matter what, that's largely true, 
they'll mostly just feature the guys that those people like. You yearn for mainstream attention, yet you consistently feature guys that don't cross over well and guys that you won't get that type of exposure that will help them cross over well. You want that mainstream attention so bad, yet knowing that that's going to require featuring certain guys with certain looks or certain personalities that you've lived off of for years that they don't have. But you hate the smart fans, yet you mostly feature now, with the exception of Cena and a couple of others, guys that really appeal to the smart fans, guys that come from the independent background, guys that work a certain way, look a certain way, act a certain way, talk a certain way. Are you trying to be a fan, a company for the smart fans and the hardcore fans and the smarks in the internet? Or are you trying to be a company for the mainstream, for a company that appeals to the masses? It's really hard to know because I don't really know who the hell they're trying to target. Because again, so many things indicate that they want to branch out and they want to go mainstream, yet they seem to put very forth very little effort to actually go mainstream. And while they hate smart fans and they hate the hardcore fans, it seems like those are the only people that they're really trying to appeal to. Yet all the while they'll be upset about their television ratings and wondering why the ratings are away. Well, you pretty much drove away everybody that isn't a hardcore fan at this point in time, if we may be so honest. But furthermore, you look at it and you just have that question about what is their product? Like you think about the Hogan era, you that golden era, if you will. You think about the big guys, the stiff guys working slow pace matches. Da, da, da. You think about the attitude era, it's crash test dummy city all over the fucking pace with spectacular crash TV finishes and all types of crazy shit. What is their identity today for their product and their company as a whole? Vince often has said over the years that the WWE is in the movie business, that they make movies. Well, if they make movies, who the fuck would buy these scripts? How in the blue hell are you going to sit there and say you're in the business of making movies, yet all the movies you seem to be making on a consistent basis are terrible? I mean, seriously, if you took most of these feuds that the WWE has written over the course of the past several years, and most of these shows over the past several years, who in Hollywood in their right mind in the bluest of blue fucks would buy any of these damn scripts? They'd sit there and fold them up into origami or paper airplanes, light them sons of bitches on fire, piss on them, shit on them, and laugh in Vince McMahon's fucking face. You're making movies, yet movies traditionally try to tell some type of story, at least the good ones. Your product largely tells absolutely no story whatsoever. All the while, you try to sit there and say you are a sports entertainment company first, even though you've said so many times over the years that you want to make movies, and you will still talk about how important that live event audience is, that live event element is, the television show is, that's the core competency, that's your base area, that's what everything funnels off of, yet you'll consistently undermine that product for the sake of your freaking movie studio. You'll take characters like Dean Ambrose or Paige or The Miz or whoever the hell it mouse might be, apparently Dolph Ziggler now, when they've got any type of traction and momentum, you'll yank them off of television so that way they can go film some fucking straight-to-DVD crap fest freaking movie. If you want to be in the movie business, then just be WWE Studios and only make crappy straight-to-DVD movies. If you want to be in the sports entertainment business, then you focus on that first and send your people out when the timing is right, and you've created a situation for them to go and appear in other people's bigger movies, so that way you expand your audience. Again, we come to the whole thing of talking about trying to grow your audience on the mainstream. All the while, they do shows like Total Divas and Tough Enough that are only going to appeal to the audience that you already have, and at a slightly, actually more than significantly smaller portion of that total hardcore audience that you already have. Those shows are not appealing to the mainstream. They're not growing your overall audience, so why the fuck are you doing them? It's largely a waste of damn time. You're just further diluting your marketplace that you've already oversaturated to begin with. And furthermore, again, if you're not going to sit there and appeal to the mainstream, stop trying to pretend like you're appealing to the mainstream. It's just absolutely mind-blowing what this company does. Because... The mainstream loves stories. They get off on the stories more than they do the matches. Yet so much of your product is about matches and lack of story. Why in the hell would the mainstream audience want to watch your shit? And then when we talk about this company and their whole thing of being sports entertainment, 
and they hate the word wrestling or any association with professional wrestling. Well, if you're sports entertainment, you even suck at that because there is very little sports, frankly, and most certainly even less entertainment. Like some of the old stereotype crap that people will throw out about the WWE, talking about the Muppets and doing this and doing that. They don't even do that shit. They're not even doing crappy sports entertainment. They're just crappy. They've forgotten how to even be sports entertainment. They've forgotten how to do the wacky, insane, ridiculous, doesn't make sense, good shit in an entertaining way. They just do a bunch of bad, dumb shit in a sucky way. You hate the word wrestling and any association with it, yet all the while, your product is almost nothing but the in-ring product. How the fuck can you hate something that is totally who you aspire to be? If you want to be a sports entertainment company, then be a sports entertainment company. Don't sit there and say you're sports entertainment and then everything about your product and presentation says you're a mediocre wrestling show. Where the hell is the sports entertainment? Where the hell is the entertainment? You are a wrestling company and a bad one at that. If you don't want to be associated with the word, then stop acting like you are the epitome of that word. Again, you just think about it. The WWE, it's a, it's a major identity crisis in so many ways. Their heroes are villains. Their villains are heroes. Their baby faces act like the bullies. Their heels act like the oppressed. When you look at their product, they want the mainstream attention, but everything they do seems to cater to the hardcore audience that is always going to be there and is, you know, a small percentage of the audience that they could get. They're mad about the ratings, but do very little to actually affect those ratings. They're a company that makes movies, but yet they don't bother to tell any real type of compelling story in any way, shape, or form. They're kid and family friendly, yet all the while they're still trying to appeal to the male adult without doing the stuff that will appeal to the male adults. They're wanting to sit there and appeal to advertisers by being kid and family friendly, yet the advertisers care more about the male 18 to 34, 18 to 39 demographic. You want to appeal to kids, women, families, yet your audience is still male dominant, so you're trying to appeal to them while also appealing to them. You've got superstars that are supposed to be heroes to kids that are saying bitch and ass and talking about all those types of crazy shit. You've still got extreme rules matches where people are hitting each other with steel chairs and everything else. I understand WWE's plight. They don't know what the hell to do because they don't know who the hell they are. And that most certainly shows in the product because, frankly, I don't know if you could sit there and point to the WWE right now. You can really come up with an identity for them because I most certainly can't. 